Hello and welcome back to the North Lodge Cottage Garden. It is that time once again and it is time to, for me to offer you my top 20 recommended David Austin roses. This has been the most stressful thing I have done for a very, very long time. I have really felt the pressure with this. There has been a huge reshuffle at the very top of what was last year, the top 10. And I wanna make it quite clear that that doesn't mean that any of those roses that I reviewed last year have, in my opinion, uh, changed or have got worse, or they don't have the qualities I talked about in the video that I produced this time last year. All of them are incredibly special. However, there are three or four new roses that I've now had in the collection for over 15 to 18 months that have really shown a massive promise bringing together some really wonderful characteristics, not at all taking away from what used to be in the top 10, but some characteristics where David Austin have really been focusing highly on the overall appearance of the plant. That combines not only fragrance, bloom colour, size, repeat flowering, foliage colour, all of those together to create some unbelievable roses which have stormed right into the top of the top 10. So just to give you a little bit of a recap on where we were last year, uh, number one was Lady Emma Hamilton, which I'm really sorry to tell you that I now believe has been discontinued worldwide. I haven't had that confirmed by David Austin, but I do have rumours rumbling everywhere that it's not only out of stock, but the waiting lists are being uh, taken away. So Lady Emma Hamilton has held the number one spot for me for several years now. So it went Lady Emma Hamilton, Estacia Vi, Crown Princess Margarita, at four was Princess Anne, the Country Parson, Claire Austin was in at number six, seven was ranked Tranquility, eight, Sceptred Isle, nine, Harlow Car, and 10, Jubilee Celebration. So where will the top 10 fall this year? Only time will tell. I am quite literally surrounded by roses. Uh, my husband, bless him, his hay fever is absolutely terrible. And I have basically brought as many plants into the house as at all possible. So let's get to it. At number 20 is the very lovely, generous gardener. One of the best climbers, in my opinion, that David Austin have ever bred. A stunning pink rose, which for most gardens is really quite handleable. Reaching around 14 to 15 feet, it will cover the front of a house quite easily without getting out of hand and have something that you're constantly hacking at and having to really get into to get under control. So at number 20 is the generous gardener. Now in at number 19 is Olivia Rose Austin, a beautiful rose from David Austin, which unfortunately for me right now is actually out of flower. So please do go over to my Instagram or to my YouTube and have a look at the review for that particular rose. Uh, Olivia Rose Austin is a really lovely repeat flowering true pink rose, very, very pale pink. Uh, her head's knob ever so slightly downwards, which is why she's ever so slightly only just making into the top 20. For me, it's a characteristic I struggle with just a little bit. I would prefer if her blooms came upright just a little more, but Olivia Rose Austin taking a little break in the garden at the moment is in at number 19, and she is absolutely perfect for planting in a pot. Uh, right, in at number 18 is the very, very beautiful Rald Dahl, a fantastic little shrub rose from David Austin reaching only around four feet tall, this particular one has lovely orange blood buds and beautiful deeply cupped apricot blooms. A perfect plus point with this particular rose is if you're gardening with slightly dappled shade, somewhere where it's only gonna get four, maybe five hours worth of sunshine every day. Rolled Dahl is a really, really good rose for you to be planting, either in a pot or straight into the ground. A beautiful combination of lovely true apricot flowers and really lovely fresh green foliage with a really nice fragrance. A hard working rose, which is well worth looking out for. So that is Rald Dahl. Right up next for you at number 17 is the really large and blousy Princess Alexandra of Kent. One of two roses producing enormous blooms in the garden. David Austin stocked this uh, in two forms, either in bush form or as a standard tree. I have it in both forms because I like this rose so much. So this is the Princess Alexandra of Kent. 
part of David Austin's Best for Flowering and Best for Fragrance range, this rose is going to appear also on my Best for Cutting list in the next couple of weeks. So this is really one to look out for. If you're looking to bring uh, plants in from the house from a cutting garden, Princess Alexandra of Kent is something you want to be looking out for. The fragrance is really good on that one, so do look out for it. Right, up next for you, this needs to be organised and put these down in the right order, otherwise everything's going to get very confused. The next one, in at number 16, is a new entry for me. I sound like I'm Scott Mills doing the chart on Radio 1, but yeah, at number 16 is a new entry for me, reviewed this year. This is the very beautiful but very simple Q Gardens. And the reason why this one has stormed up into the top 20 so quickly, this is only a variety that I've had for a very limited time. I've been growing this now for 18 months. I have never seen a rose flower so hard in the garden. It starts and it doesn't stop right into the very, very end of the season. Now, I know a lot of you will frown upon its very, very basic uh, blooms that don't have very much fragrance. They're very plain, they're very simple, but when everything else in the garden is really, really shouting and screaming for attention, Q Gardens from David Austin is very, very simple. It's very quiet, it's very understated, and it's just beautiful. Obviously attracting lots of hoverflies, uh, bees, and uh, pollinating insects, Kew Gardens is a really lovely addition to my garden, forming a lovely big mound-shaped bush. It is never out of flower, and another plus point, it produces really lovely hips towards the back end of the season. So very good for winter interest as well. Right, holding fast and just managing to stay within the top 20, Jubilee Celebration. Now I spoke a second ago about Princess Alexandra of Kent. Jubilee Celebration is another rose from David Austin which produces extremely large blooms. They are absolutely massive. This is my hand. You can see how big this bloom is. It's the best part of four and a half coming onto five inches across. Really, really lovely. And the reason why I love this rose so much is not only does it do quite well in partial shade, which it is in the garden here, but it's also a really lovely rose for cutting and has the most extraordinary aging process. As the flower ages, the colour really does go quite an antique colour and it has a really wonderful fragrance. It's rich and it's strong. It's a really lovely rose for cutting and bringing into the house. So this one is Jubilee Celebration, hanging onto its spot just inside the top 20. Next up for you is another new entry, which I don't have a bloom for you today. I reviewed this rose for you this year, had it for around 18 months in the garden, and it's Molyneux from David Austin Roses. A very, very early addition to the collection, bred, I can't remember, I think in the mid 90s, but an absolutely resplendent, true gold flower, which we have planted just outside of our kitchen windows. And it gives me immense joy looking at, out, looking at it from the outside the window. It literally glows with, fray, with, with colour. So in at number 14 is Molyneux. I say I don't have a bloom to show you today, but please do go uh, to the, uh, the, the feed for the National Rose Month for 2022 and find the review for that one, because that one really, really has made quite an impression on me this year. At number 13 and dropping four places down in the rankings, not because it's done anything wrong, but sure, just literally because of the sheer class of some of the things that have been uh, bred by David Austin over the last three or four years is the really lovely and very useful Harlow car. This is a fantastic little rose and available in bundles from David Austin that you can use as hedging. It's a really fabulous little rose that you could also plant in a pot. It's very hardy and salt resistant as well, which is really useful if you're, about, if you're growing on a balcony or you're facing the sea. But Hallow Car is a really lovely little rose, but do be aware of its thorns. It's very, very spiky, but a lovely little rose with the most stunning fragrance. One plant of Harlow Car will literally fill an area, 10 foot by 10 foot, with the most wonderful perfume. It does cut well and does, uh, does come into the house beautifully, but do be aware of its very, very sharp barbs. So this one is Harlow Car, down four places, ranking now at number 13. Right, next one up for you is number 12, which is one of the beautiful white roses that I grow. 
No other white rose in the garden will work as hard as Tranquility. Now the only drawback with this particular rose is not because it absolutely flowers its socks off all the way through the season and it's still in flower right at the end of the year when you probably want to crack on with your pruning and your mulching, but the size of Tranquility is a little large. It really does get quite big up towards maybe five to six feet with a spread of sometimes five to six feet as well. This is a really large shrub rose, but beautiful blooms on very nearly thornless stems, which are absolutely stunning. I'll bring that one in a little closer for you to have a look at. This is Tranquility, now ranking number 12 with me. Thundering on towards the top 10 now, and down again, uh, three places, not because it's done anything wrong or my opinion of this rose has changed, but please don't go, do have a look at its review from last year. The very lovely Sceptred Isle from David Austin Roses. A lovely, beautiful, true pink, very pale pink plant with the most wonderful yellow stamens right in the centre of the flower. Tranquility is a stunning rose with a really lovely fragrance, but has now unfortunately been outclassed by one or two new entries into the top 10. This rose, although very, very pretty, is lacking that entire combination that I was thinking, talking to you about. It's nothing that, nothing that I have changed my opinion on. It's still very beautiful. I have two of these in the garden, but there are other roses now that David Austin have focused particularly on the overall impression of the bush and Sceptred are, as I say, dropping slightly down the rankings and now ranking at number 11. Another dropping uh, plant now coming out of the top 10, but now ranking at number 10 is Claire Austin. Now, Claire, as I say, has had lots of different reviews from lots of different people. I get loads of messages about Claire Austin, who is now ranking number 10 on my uh, top 20 David Austin roses. But Claire Austin, for me, is a rose that you really want to be growing up a pillar or a post. Please don't try and train this on a wall. It will, in my opinion, never work. It will look lumpy, bumpy, it will look untidy, and it's not the kind of thing that I think will look very pleasant. But Claire Austin, the only reason why this one is sliding ever so slightly with me down to the number 10 spot is really this year has been very damp and it's suffered terribly with balling. She's a very, very deeply cupped rose. You can see there those, those petals coming right up and meeting uh, the central bowl there meaning that when it's wet this does unfortunately ball up and I've lost virtually the entire first flush on Claire this year. It's been completely ruined by the weather. Not her fault but there are other roses now in the David Austin collection which are standing up much much better to the rain and the heat. So this is Claire Austin now ranked number 10. Right, all very exciting. We are halfway there. So here is the point where things start to really really shuffle about. Number nine never out of flower and still very, very held high in my heart and aspirations is the beautiful Princess Anne. She is absolutely stunning. A fantastic shrub rose from David Austin Roses, flowering her socks off all the way through the year, every single year without letdown. I love this particular rose for, for several reasons, but mainly because it's never out of flower. And secondly, I love the way it ages. Very, very gracefully, you'll have these beautiful magenta pink flowers, which will slowly, as you can see this one here, just starting to fade out this one towards the camera. They will slowly go this gray pink color before the petals fall. The flowers are born. Look at the mat, look at the size of the cluster here. This is four or five blooms with another two uh, buds still to come. But this is Princess Anne. Only drawback for myself is there's no fragrance on this plant whatsoever. But please don't let you stop you buying this because it's a really cracking rose which will march all the way through the summer, flowering and flowering and flowering, reaching only about four feet. So it's a really good size bush to have about. So this is the very lovely Princess Anne, now ranked in at number nine. Right, up for you next, a newcomer from David Austin with myself. Uh, launched not too long ago and this particular rose holds the family name. So there's no surprise that we're talking about the very, very lovely James L. Austin. Bringing everything together, starting to really pull that, uh, that impression of the perfect rose all together. Very, very beautiful, strong pink blooms are born on a mounding sized bush, which reaches around four and a half to five feet. A really, really pleasant flower, uh, which works really hard in the garden. 
and there's the fragrance a really really strong rich fruity smelling rose which is absolutely adorable so this is my new number eight this is james l austin right up for you at number seven uh, a rose that has dropped four places in my top 10 but still an absolute stunner this one is crown princess margarita a absolutely beautiful apricot rose which bears these enormous sprays of apricot flowers with this very very deep ruffling to them this rose cuts really really well i love bringing this one into the house it doesn't last all very long in the bar in the vase maybe two or three days but those two or three days are absolutely joyous it flowers in abundance and another really useful rose to have around which is quite tall for, so great for planting at the back of a border where it's going to reach about five coming on to six feet or on the side of a rose arch where you want to actually cover the sides but not have a, a rose go right up over the top or if you're like me you just let it flop about and it looks just absolutely beautiful the fragrance on this one is really really lovely and crown princess margarita for me is a real winner so this one although down four places at number seven is still incredibly highly recommended for myself and flowers really well in partial shade you can give this plant four or five hours worth of direct sunlight a day and this rose will flower and flower and flower so a really really useful one to have about excuse me while i just reach over for the next bars there are literally flowers absolutely everywhere so down into number six this rose at the chelsea flower show was quite literally filling the secret garden created by david austin roses with fragrance it is very closely related to another rose that's appeared already in the top 20 this is the country parson it is absolutely stunning the only drawback and it really is the only thing about this rose is like harlow car it is absolutely laced with very very sharp razor sharp barbs so you do need to handle this one with the utmost care but in at number six this is the country parson i have mine growing in a really large pot on the uh, hard standing outside the summer house where it brings me immense pleasure. It flowers and flowers. It fills the air with the most amazing fragrance, much like its, uh, its sister rose, the Harlow Car. The fragrance, oh, it's rich, it's fruity. It's gotten tones of old rose. There's everything in there. This rose is one of the full packages. The, say the only drawback with this particular rose is it's laced with really, really sharp barbs. But this is your number six. This is the Country Parson. Right, up for you next and falling down three places. And it's not falling down three places for any reason in particular, but apart from the fact that, as I say, we're talking about combinations, bringing absolutely everything together. Another rose that's perfect for a pot, down three places, but holding steady at number five. This is the stunning Estacia Vi. A beautiful rose from David Austin, sporting this beautiful dark pink, but with these lovely tones of apricot and peach running through it. If I turn the bloom round, can you see that lovely yellowing and apricotting running up the back of the flower? Again, I have mine planted in a pot where it's reaching three and a half to four feet. It is dripping with flowers. The scent is great and it does cut remarkably well. The stems, as you can see from this one that I've cut, this one's been deadheaded several times. There's been a bloom up here. I've removed a whole spray from over here and another one from over here. So you can see that it's working really, really hard, virtually thornless. So to handle it is an absolute dream. So falling just a few places, but literally because of the quality of the ones that are coming up in the rest of the top five, this at number five is a Stacey of I. Very, very exciting now to bring you the last of the top five. And this one is difficult for me to say. My, my former number one, the number one lady, the queen of my garden, has fallen to number four. Uh, the lady, Emma Hamilton, I'm really sorry to say, is, seems to be discontinued now worldwide. There are rumours everywhere that they can't get this to be healthy anymore and it's now... You know, root stocks are running low and this that and the other so i don't think lady emma hamilton is going to be in stock anytime soon often uh, compared very strongly to the lady of shallot which as you can see i can tell you i'll get a bit of a spoiler a lot lady of shallot is not going to be ranking anywhere in this top 20 
So for me, the Lady Emma Hamilton is a much, much better rose than the Lady of Shalott. And this was one of the first roses that I started talking to you about and why she ranks or she had ranked number one for so long because the overall impression of this particular flower was absolutely stunning, bringing together the beautiful coppery tones of her foliage with the red outer edges, with the beautiful dark apricot blooms, with that lovely gold apricot colour running through it, and an absolutely amazing fragrance. If you come across, if you find the Lady Emma Hamilton somewhere in a bargain bin, please add her to your collection. A shrub rose reaching around five feet high, a late bloomer not coming into flower until the very, very back end of June and then marching all the way through into September and October, where that light frequency starts to change ever so slightly and it really picks up those lovely coppery tones. So I'm really sorry to say that Lady Emma Hamilton with me, my last former number one, now falling down to a very, very, you know, a very good ranking position of still of number four, but no longer on the top spot. So the next three roses up for you are all fairly new, all bred in the last four or five years, all with me now having been here around 18 months and all have completely and utterly captivated my attention. I wonder if any of you have noticed which ones will be on the one number one, two and three slot, bearing uh, having think back to the rose reviews that you may or may not have watched over the last few weeks. The next rose in at number three is absolutely belting. This is Gabriel Oak. A full package of a rose absolute full package of a rose from David Austin. This one needs a round of applause. It is an absolute stunner. The only thing that's keeping this really off the top spot with myself is I don't really uh, know how to describe the colour. Much as it's absolutely stunning and looks very, very much like Thomas A. Beckett, which I struggle with, it is a fabulous looking rose. You can see if I bring that towards the camera, really deeply rosetted flowers. Uh, born on a really attractive shaped bush with lovely burgundy red stems. The whole thing coming together with a foliage which is lovely, got a dark olive tinge to it. The whole bush coming together as a really, really fabulous plant. The fragrance on this one, as you would expect, you can see there the colour is really deep and it is very, very fruity. It's very deep. Uh, it smells of black currants and soft fruit like black currants. So all of those fr uh, fr uh, fragrances you'd get coming off of a summer pudding. All of those heady aromas that will make you think of those beautiful, heavy summer days. So in at number three and storming straight into the top five is Gabriel Oak, a really lovely rose. Oh, this was really, really hard. I have deliberated, cogitated, digested, as Lloyd Grossman would say. It has been really difficult to tell the difference between the two of these. If you ask me on a different day, it might be a different answer, but there are now two new roses added to my collection, which I've had for around 18 months, that have stolen the top spot. There's minuscule amounts between them, but number two for myself is gonna be Mill on the Floss. An absolute stunner of a rose with this beautiful, I'm gonna bring that closer to you, this beautiful aging to the flower. Very, very much like Benjamin Britten, which used to be in the top 15 with myself, which has now unfallen, which fortunately, because of all these shifts around, fallen down the rankings. But much like the lovely Benjamin Britten, you have this lovely flushing to the outside of the petals. Mill on the Floss is a really large shrub, uh, reaching something in the region of five and a half, and in my opinion, maybe onto even six feet. A very informal, floppy plant that's going to be lovely and whimsical and give you that lovely fairy tale cottage garden look, which I absolutely adore. I know some of you are going to find that a little bit difficult to handle, but Mill on the Floss for me is a really belter of a rose. Deeply cupped blooms with that lovely, uh, it's a, um, a candy floss pink with that bleaching of the petals, a really fabulous fragrance. Virtually thornless, you can cut this and bring this into the house. So my new number two is Mill on the Floss. Narrowly, narrowly, pitching it to the post. This is not the best adaptation of the actual flower itself. This, this one really did capture me this year. And last year the blooms were absolutely extraordinary. And one of the, the pictures I, I posted on this to Instagram last year, 
I couldn't actually believe I'd taken it with my camera, my phone camera, I just snapped it one day and it was absolutely cracking. That particular image is now being used by David Austin on their online shop. This is Silas Marner. This rose for me, along with the other three now holding top one, two and three positions, is the full package, heralding a wonderful uh, new era of rose breeding for David Austin roses, where they're paying attention to all of the aspects, not just the fragrance, not just the fact they may or may not be thornless, but that foliage colour, the growth tips, the stems, the flowering, the shape, all coming together in a really, really fabulous plant. So my new number one I am proud to announce is Silas Marner from David Austin Roses. An absolute cracker of a rose, but if you were asking me to, te to tear between the two, between Mill on the Floss and Silas Marner, it is so closely called, both of them are utterly fabulous complete full packages along with Gabriel Oak, bringing all of those lovely qualities together that I think we're all looking for in the modern English rose. Now, every single rose that I've talked to you about today actually has its own individual rose review with myself, either done in 2020, 2021, or this year during National Rose Month 2022. Please do go back and if you've seen any of the roses that really have captivated your attention, here in the top 20. Please do, do go back and have a look at those rose reviews. If you can't find what you're looking for, drop me a message or a comment somewhere and I will tag you in it and make sure that you uh, can find what you're looking for. This has been my pleasure to bring you my top 20 recommended David Austin roses. Please do like, follow, share and subscribe and leave me a comment. I look forward to seeing you all a very again soon. I'm not looking forward to ranking all these again because this has been really hard work, but this has been my top 20 recommended David Austin Roses for 2022.